So as we have learned more about mental disorders, we have also learned that a large proportion of these uh, people do not receive any treatment. And that is uh, a major problem. We sometimes talk uh, of a treatment gap, and when we talk about treatment gap, we are referring to these people who do meet the criteria for a mental disorder but do not receive treatment. Any are people who met diagnostic criteria for any of the uh, common mental disorders that are assessed um, in the uh, NCS. About 20% in early 90s had had any mental health contact. The prevalence went up to 32%, so a 50% increase. Now, uh, I have done studies and others have done studies uh, on these data and other um, data, and um, in this period, there was also a, a large increase in use of antidepressants, uh, almost a fourfold increase in use of antidepressants in this period. There was an increase in almost all forms of treatment. Any contact with mental health professionals went from 6.3% to 7.9%. Uh, same thing happened with uh, any mental health medication use, it increased. Any mental health treatment also increased. One study is by Kessler. And again, using National Comorbidity Survey and its replication, um, they looked at the prevalence of 12-month DSM um, psychiatric disorders. And the prevalence did not change. So all these data that I showed you, uh, one thing seems to be clear, that the prevalence of mental disorders and psychological distress did not decrease after increased use of treatments. So what you see is that, um, the effect sizes uh, for both groups, for both uh, medications used for uh, mental health and for physical health, they're around 0 0.4. So uh, it doesn't, it looks like uh, medications at least that are used in treatment of psychiatric disorders in these randomized control trials are as efficacious as medications used in, uh, for treatment of medical conditions like hypertension, diabetes, pain, etc. Uh, there has been a change in public attitude. People are reporting symptoms more often. Now, this is a very tricky uh, possibility. Um, for almost all age groups, the attitude uh, did improve, except for the uh, 45 to 54 years uh, old group. I fall in that group. Our, our attitudes don't change that much. <laughs> There has been increased incidence of these disorders because of what has happened in this country over the past 20 or 30 years. So there has been a secular trend increasing the incidence and, um, and there has been a uh, effect of treatment reducing the duration of the disorders. As a result, the prevalence has not changed. That's the argument. So we know that the uh, treatment has increased, but there is growing evidence that these treatments are not targeted at the people who most benefit from treatments. The proportion who met the criteria declined from 70%, that's the blue area in the uh, left uh, circle, to 54% in the uh, right side. So the prevalence of uh, uh, um, mental disorders among those people who are receiving uh, treatments uh, might actually have uh, gotten down. This is data on continuity of care. I mentioned continuity of care is really poor uh, with regard to antidepressants or all um, psychiatric treatments, even psychotherapies. The modal number of visits to psychiatrists or mental health providers is about one uh, in a lot of uh, surveys. As you can see, among those who said that the treatment was not at all, uh, at all helpful, uh, more than 60%, that's the... Uh, um, that's this bar, more than 60% had seen only a general medical provider. When you go to those who say that treatment was extremely helpful, um, close to 80% had seen a mental health professional. Um, in the future years, with the expansion of insurance and um, use of mental health uh, treatments more widely in primary care settings, um, I think that treatments will increase. Larger and larger proportion of the population will be using uh, mental health treatments. And um, the role of primary care uh, is likely to increase either in the form of medical homes um, or um, other forms of uh, organizing um, care for, for patients. 
and it's it has been said multiple times the quality of mental health care in primary care needs improvements and I, I think that collaborative care models provide a, a very promising um, model uh, especially since they are uh, very amenable to a uh, to a medical home setting but a final word is that I think that we may come to it that to reduce the prevalence of mental disorders at community setting in a meaningful way, we may need to um, put more emphasis uh, on prevention.